Hey guys, I'm Danielle, and a few months ago Ubisoft reached out and asked me to make a cosplay of one of their operators from Rainbow Six Extraction. I picked Ella, and so this video is going to be an overview of how I put together the costume and sort of showing you everything that went into making it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Ubisoft was kind enough to send me 3D references for this project, which made the whole process a hell of a lot easier. My first step was to break down the 3D model into individual files so that I could turn them into templates or 3D printable models. Once I had all the pieces separated, I began neatening and detailing the models for 3D printing over in Blender. I used mean creases and subdivision surface modifiers to smooth out the model and booleans to add the details. For Ella's harness, I actually used the 3D models to make fabric patterns by bringing them into Armorsmith. The program has a digital mannequin of me and not only allows me to easily scale the model to my size, but also cut it into a 2D printout of the faces of the model. With my template sorted and the 3D printers on, it was time to get creating. So for the harness and belt, I covered thin upholstery padding with Yaya Han scuba hex, the smaller Yaya Han latex pleather hex, and heavy cotton drill on the underside. There's also some sewable reflective high-vis tape and some nylon webbing around the edging. I simply traced and cut out the inner padding and the fabrics, remembering to leave seam allowances. My patterns do not include that. Because they have nylon webbing along the edges of these pieces, I just sandwiched the padding between my fabrics and sewed around it, because these seam excesses will get covered by the nylon webbing. This ended up being very thick to sew through and had to be done very slowly. I did also end up bending a sewing machine needle doing this. For the waist belt specifically, I had an existing tactical belt that I wanted to run through the inside of it, so I had to remember to actually insert that before I sewed anything together. With the base of the harness done, it was onto the bag that these pieces would attach to. I purchased the closest thing to Ella's in-game bag that I could find online with the intention of just adding details, but unsurprisingly this ended up being way harder than it needed to be and I probably should have just made an entire bag from scratch. I drew up all the panels and details that I wanted to add to the bag, turned them into somewhat usable templates and pretty much just started cutting and sewing. Much like the harness, these panels are just fabric over thin padding and use nylon webbing as edging in some places. Though this time I am using a two-way stretch pleather and a heavy cotton drill. There's a lot of little details on this bag, like all the straps and the small front pouch that I made from some cotton drill and just stuffed with bubble wrap. I also made all of the molly somewhat functional. It was kind of around this point that I realized just how much work that I had made for myself. Making all of the panels themselves was super easy. It was actually attaching them to the thick bag that was a problem. I ended up having to hand sew everything to the bag and that sucked. Once I had all the panels on, I attached all of the straps and painted a bunch of yellow details onto the bag using some handmade stencils. I do really need to invest in buying a machine to do this part for me. And just like that, the bag is pretty much done. At this point, I was still waiting for my fabric to be delivered from the US, so I just started on what I had laying around, like the boots. I did already own this pair that were pretty similar, I just had to shorten them and add some details. They also looked too new, so I weathered them down with a rotary tool, sandpaper, a knife, and even a rock. The pleather hat that I ordered also arrived, so naturally I beat the crap out of that too. Ella's shoes have yellow soles, and mine do not, so my solution to this was to take them outside and drown them in Plasti Dip until they were yellow. Unfortunately, it was slightly too fluorescent, so I did end up painting some other yellow over the top of it to dull it down a little bit. My main fabric finally arrived, so now it was time to make the patterns. For the jacket, I started with a pre-existing jacket pattern I purchased online. I made a calico mock-up, put the mock-up on, and then just began drawing any changes that I needed to make straight onto the fabric. I ended up altering the overall length, the sleeve length, changing the cut of the hood, adding cuffs, and also extra seams to the sleeves. But Ella also has these really cool shoulder pads, and I believe these are based on the heavy winter Polish uniform, but I could only find like two images online, so Ella just must be a true rebel. Ella is a true rebel. I should have also patterned my pockets for the front of the jacket at this point, uh, but I'm not that smart. For the pants, I had a pair of jeans that kind of fit how I wanted her pants to fit. So I put them on and used some chalk to draw on the seams that I wanted. 
I then traced that to tracing paper. This was a bit of a pain in the butt, no pun intended, but my pattern was pretty much perfect first go, I just had to add a little bit of length to the waist and to the shins. I did also at this stage pattern my gloves using tape and just kind of wrapping my hand and drawing it on there, but despite having 300 gigabytes of footage, there's just none of the gloves. I did a quick test fit with some of the other pieces to confirm scaling and accuracy, and then it was just time to get serious. The dyeing process should have been a quick and easy one day process, but it very, very quickly turned into four days and lots of crying. For some reason, despite doing everything correctly, my first batch of tests turned a dark reddish purple on the main fabric, but not on the cotton drill, so I just dyed the drill and tried again the next day for my main fabric. The second day of dyeing, I ended up getting the color perfect on my test pieces, but when I threw all of it in the dye bath, the color just didn't take even after an hour, like at all, it was just kind of tinted a light blue. So you guessed it, I had to dye it again the following day. Luckily, third time's the charm, and it held most of the color. So day four was dyeing the nylon straps, patches, and also the heavy cotton drill that I needed for the hood and the zipper cover. All of this though worked miraculously the first time, and I think yellow is my new favorite color. Ella's clothes and extraction have this really cool hex pattern on the teal, and I actually managed to find some hex ripstop online that was perfect for this. Downside was this was the stuff that didn't really want to dye, and it's also pretty thin, and while it's ripstop, it does fray on the edges quite a lot. So I made the choice to double it up to give it more volume for the pants, and on the jackets I decided to double it and back it with a heavy cotton drill to really ensure that it gave me the pouchy look on the bottom of the jacket. So very nervously I traced and cut all my patterns, double checking that I had it flipped and rotated and lined up the correct way, and it was a little bit of a nightmare, but we got there. The pants actually went together really easy, I just pinned it all together, sewed down all the seams, and then I was ready to try it on. I actually had to make a few tiny adjustments before I overlocked all of the seams, and I also overlocked the ankles and the waist. I decided not to put cuffs on the ankles or to turn them over or anything because I wanted to retain the stretch, and also because I figured you wouldn't see them. Except now I'm, now I'm showing them to you, so uh, there you have it. Once I'd sewn in the waistband, I just made the knee pads from the pleather and the cotton drill on the back, sewed on the reflective strip and used Angelus paint for the gray around the edge and also the logo. Again, using one of my handmade tape stencils. I do really, really, really need a machine for that. And then I just had to paint some yellow on the shin and they were done. For the jacket, I started by making the shoulder pads. Again, it's the same thin padding with the two-way stretch pleather on top and the heavy cotton drill on the underside. The outside edge was sewn inside out and neatly as this would be seen, while the other edges were sewn sandwich style along the seams of the padding, because that left me with seam allowance to then attach into the jacket seams. The shoulders have a really cool textured panel on them, and so I'm using the same mini hex as on the harness for these to tie it together. Because all of this fabric is so grippy to the foot of the sewing machine, and they have a really cool top stitch that my sewing machine can't do, I actually had to hand sew these on. Once the shoulders were done, I pinned and assembled the body of the jacket before pinning and assembling the sleeve. I should have also sewn in the sleeve cuffs here, but I think by now we've come to realize that I'm a little bit of an idiot. And then this is where things got tricky. I had to not only pin and sew the sleeve in, but also that big thick shoulder pad. I had to line up all of the seams, clip it all, and then somehow jam it into the sewing machine. And this was the longest process on the planet, and I'm incredibly grateful for the clips because I don't know how I would have done this with pins. Next up, I sewed together the hood, pinned it in place to the jacket, and sewed it on. The seams were starting to get pretty thick with five layers of fabric all round up here, so it was time for some more slow sewing. When I finally had the hood in and tried it on, it dawned on me that I had not sewn the cuffs in. So it was at this point that I did that horrible task. I sewed in the zip before pinning in the ribbing along the bottom edge of the jacket, which I actually expected to be way more difficult than it was, but I found it to be one of the easiest parts of the costume. Once again, after completing this, I realized that I should have done something way sooner, something being the yellow zipper cover. But I wasn't about to undo all the work that I'd done, so I just made it and sewed it on top. I also used some paint and a stencil to add some texture to this bit to match my reference images a bit more closely. With the base of my jacket complete, it was time to make some pockets, because again, I'm a little bit of an idiot and I didn't do this sooner. The pockets were assembled separately and then hand sewn on so that they would be in the correct position. I also hand stitched the detail thread that runs down the zip cover and around the hood. 
And all of this hand sewing really just took so much time, didn't it? Finally, it was time to paint the yellow stripes on the sleeves, and you guessed it, I handmade stencils using some tape again. I dabbed on several coats of Angelus leather paint, allowing it to dry in between coats, and I was absolutely thrilled with the results of this. At this stage, there were only a few things left to do once the sleeves were dry, including the remaining pocket that I'd forgotten about, the patches, and some yellow text details. The final thing to do to the jacket was the React logo front and center. For Ella's hair, I just got a longish, greenish, wavy wig online, and I didn't actually do all that much to it. I simply wet it down and straightened it before I cut it to length. And again, somehow I don't actually have any footage of the actual haircut, so I'm gonna have to ask you to use your imagination on that one. But what you don't have to use your imagination on is the 3D prints. During this whole process, my printers had been working their butts off and printing out accessories for Ella. And when I found myself between tasks, I was also hard at work sanding them. And sanding them. And sanding them. I actually think there was a period of time where I didn't have fingerprints. The face mask is half PLA and half clear resin print. And while I question its practicality, I am a huge fan of how cool this design is. I still needed to make the padding for the gadgets to mount to, but it was pretty quick and easy as it was just the same process as the harness that you saw me make earlier. I then airbrushed on the logos to the strapping, again, tape stencils, and then I airbrushed the base colors onto the 3D prints. Here you can see me once again displaying my intellect. Seriously, I do not know where I thought I was gonna put these down to dry, but let's just ignore me. I did some hand painting to get the texture onto the bottom half of the gadget, and then hit everything with a black wash of 50-50 paint and water to weather it before I clear coated it. Once everything was painted, I simply assembled all the straps and it was time. The costume was finished. A project that I had worked on for months and still somehow found myself finishing things at 1 a.m. the night before the shoot, was done. Oh, also this is the harness that holds up the leg gear. It just goes around my waist under the jacket. Anyway, it's finished. A labor of love, a teacher of lessons, a costume that was far too warm to wear in December in Australia. Completed. If you made it to the end, thank you. I hope that you found this video interesting or helpful in some way. I personally had a lot of fun making this costume and I am really excited to wear it again at a convention, maybe in winter this time. Rainbow Six Extraction is out now and there's a link in the description below. Thank you again for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. actually have over 300 gigabytes of videos from making this costume so if you want to see anything in more detail just you just let me know <laughs>